Hey guys, Brennan Mejia here. So I'm an actor. You may recognize me from Power Rangers Dino Charge, one of my favorite and biggest roles to date. So as much as I love being a Power Ranger and getting to portray a hero on screen, there's a lot of behind the scenes that you may not be familiar with about what actually takes place having to relocate to a foreign country, being away from your family for almost a full year, and a lot of other details that we're gonna dive into. So I never wanna come across as ungrateful because being in Power Rangers truly was and is amazing. But there are some hardships that go along with it. I mean, for instance, in acting, at least in the States, there's the sag after union that once you're in the union, you're not allowed to do non-union jobs. Power Rangers, at least when I was on it, was non-union. So to be able to film Power Rangers, I had to either quit the union or join something called FICOR, which is like a financial core. Basically, it lets you film union or non-union, but you lose some of your union privileges, such as being able to vote, getting uh, movie screeners in the mail, and other things you're ineligible for. And it's often frowned upon in the industry. But fortunately, I worked with someone in SAG-AFTRA who enabled me to seamlessly go to FICOR while I filmed and then I had five years after I finished Power Rangers to rejoin the union and only had to pay one third of the initiation fee because the full initiation fee for SAG-AFTRA is several thousand dollars. So they worked with me and they were very accommodating because I was upfront about it. But I've known of other people who have gotten in trouble because they would do giant non-union projects without letting the union know first and they'd get caught. So it's always one of those things that it's risky um, because then when you're doing non-union, you don't have the same union protections in the job either. The union's there for a reason. But yes, since Power Rangers was non-union, it wasn't necessarily like financially as viable as people may think. A lot of people think, oh, you're a Power Ranger, you're a millionaire. I'm like, that's not really how it goes because we're not getting money from our toy sales and things like that. So with Power Rangers being non-union, there were certain aspects on set that weren't required. I mean, the amount of hours we worked wasn't monitored the same way per se. The amount of overtime pay wasn't monitored the same way. Not getting residuals wasn't monitored the same way. Now, some seasons of Power Rangers have been union, but ours was one of the many that weren't. But again, even being non-union Power Rangers, it's not like they didn't feed us or house us or anything. We still got a living stipend that, it's basically, it means a certain amount of money they give you when you relocate for an extended period of time because you're in a foreign country, so you have to set up a foreign bank account uh, because, you know, in New Zealand, they use New Zealand currency. So they took us there to a bank and we actually ended up getting paid largely in New Zealand currency, which sounds cool when you're living there, but, you know, then when it's time to come back to the States, having to <laughs> hit that whole percentage of how much does it cost, you know, a New Zealand dollar versus an American dollar, um, doesn't always stack up evenly. So again, people just assume you're an actor, you have a ton of money. And I'm like, depends on the role, depends on if it was union and depends on your contract. Because even in union contracts, there have been jobs that pay, which is known as SAG scale, which is like the lowest amount that they're allowed to pay for a co-star or a guest star or a lead, depending on the credit that you get for that episode. Um, but sometimes they'll go above scale if you're a name or you can get back end money depending on like ticket sales, things like that. I believe a lot of the Star Wars cast, if I recall correctly, they got money on the back end depending on how well the movies did. Power Rangers wasn't that way. So no matter how many episodes or people tuned in to watch, we didn't get more or less money. We just got paid what we got paid. So a little bit different and again, we don't get access to the toy sales, which again, we signed the contract, so it wasn't like hidden to us, but a lot of people assume like, you have a, your face on a toy, you get a lot of money from that, don't you? And I was like, only if you come to a convention and have me autograph it, do I get any money from it? Another thing that was a little difficult with Power Rangers, we didn't know better at the time because we were a bunch of young, you know, 20 year olds moving to a foreign country on this amazing adventure, getting to be the leads in a show for two seasons. They advised us, them as in the Power Rangers production, uh, to live together in the same house because it'd be easier for them to pick us all up in the morning in one van. And so they, they pitched it to us like, you'll get more sleep because we don't have to go to as many locations. Uh, you guys can get a really nice place because you'll all be paying towards it together. And it all sounded great. But then in reality, the area that they kind of picked for us happened to be a very expensive area in New Zealand, very beautiful, but we were filming so often, 
we weren't really at the house that often to even enjoy the beauty. So it was like an overpriced place to just go occasionally, sleep, pass out, and then we were back on set anyway. So in hindsight, I would have gotten a smaller place for either just myself or maybe just with Yoshi as him and I initially planned, but it didn't work out for other reasons. Just to save some money because the living stipend they gave us to relocate was not nearly sufficient for the house we ended up living in to cover all the costs. So we had to pay that out of our normal uh, income we were making every episode as well. So so with us all living together in the same house, and all of us, it was myself, Blue Ranger, Black Ranger, Green Ranger, Pink Ranger, Purple Ranger. Our Gold Ranger was thinking of moving in with us, but then he didn't last minute because he was smarter than us and got his own place. Um, and again, not that we don't get along, but when you're working together on set between 12 and 15 hours every day, and then also going home and then seeing each other, and then waking up and seeing each other, it's just a lot of time to be around the same people. I don't even see my family that much now that I'm back home in the States. So uh, it was just like a lot of getting used to being around the same people constantly for eight months. Another thing that people don't really realize with something like Power Rangers, again, living in a foreign country is amazing, but it's not like it's close enough like Vancouver to LA where you can still come back home and visit your family on weekends. We were literally on the other side of the planet, you know, 12, 13 hours by plane away. So I couldn't just come home and see family, you know, and hang out with friends, which again, you make sacrifices in the meantime, which totally, I would still do it all over again because I love filming, but some people get really homesick and it's really hard to stay in touch with family when you're in that different of a time zone where you're literally in a different day versus the people at your home. So fortunately, my wife was able to come out with me, so I had family in that sense. But other than her, uh, her mom came out and visited, and then one of my best friends came out and visited. But other than that, no one else was able to make the trek, at least in my family. Another thing that's pretty interesting that I actually forgot about till this moment is they gave us, you know, cell phones with like New Zealand numbers, right? Well, I mean, our cell phones, but like New Zealand SIM cards. And we only, at least in my season, we got one one gigabyte, I think a month of data, and New Zealand didn't have a lot of mobile hotspots everywhere. So when you ran out of data, you couldn't like check Instagram anymore and message your friends. And so, and data went really fast. And then I think eventually we got them to give us two gigabytes of data, but I talked to some of the seasons after us and they got unlimited data, which is more common now. But just at the time, it was funny because you're trying to talk to your friends and like figure out this whole social media thing because I was just starting my Instagram, but like we just run out of data constantly. And we'd be like, I gotta get on Wi-Fi post and then production would send us pictures each episode basically highlights to help us promote the episode and so we had to make sure we had wi-fi to promote it and like make sure you watch and blah 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 and see what happens next so it's just kind of funny another thing that's interesting this was the first time i was the lead in a show that i was on that i knew for sure got picked up for multiple seasons i just assumed that once the episode started airing you know maybe it was my ego talking but i thought i'd start getting recognized because dino charge was one of the first power ranger seasons to actually air in new zealand they film it there, but they wouldn't air it there because it was too violent. But eventually they changed their minds, I guess. And I just assumed like when we'd be walking around the city, people would recognize us. No, never. I don't think a single time anyone ever recognized us until we came back for the reunion episode in Beast Morphers. Then I got recognized, I think twice. But other than that, it's just like you walk around, you're like, is anyone uh, gonna like, you know, in your head, like you walk through a toy store and you're like, just casually like in your lane near all the Power Ranger toys and no one says anything. You're like, all right, well, I guess I'm not as famous as I thought I'd be after being the lead in a show. So it just humbles you because people think once you're the lead in one show, like opportunities are everywhere and you must be working constantly. And that doesn't happen a lot. Whether it's Power Rangers or other shows, you'll see people on TV. And then if you think about it, sometimes you don't see them again for years in between projects or you'll see them pop up in one episode in a show and then not again. Sometimes you get typecast, which is really just a term used for oh, I can only see you as this superhero type character and no one else. Or I can only see you as the geek or the best friend or the love interest. And if you get typecast and they're not casting for those types of roles, it's really hard to get work. So Power Rangers didn't elevate our careers as much immediately as we thought it would. Again, I still love it. Some people claim there's a Power Rangers curse, like, oh, you did Power Rangers, now you never book again. That's not true. I've continued to work since then. Camille works a lot, Yoshi works a lot. Michael became an agent at an agency for actors. So some people career shift, Davi's worked a ton. It just really depends 
on continuing to push. Acting is just a very volatile field sometimes and you have to enjoy it for the craft, not just for the money or the fame or the accolades because you can't control when that part happens. So I think it was just an interesting experience because I thought coming off of Power Rangers, I would be getting offers all the time, you know, and then I was still auditioning and doing like pre-reads, which wasn't even like straight to callback because sometimes you get auditions where they just like, if you haven't, they can put an offer only. So if an actor won't audition for it and they're offer only, that basically means they're a big enough name that they can just send in their demo reel or whatever, or you know who they are. Like Tom Hanks, probably offer only for a lot of things, or Tom Cruise, you know, they just, you know who they are, you want them in the movie, you wrote that role for that character. And I think to date, I've only ever been given one role that was straight to offer. And I don't even know who offered it. Like when I asked how they found me, no one could give me a direct answer. I don't know if it's from Power Rangers they saw me or something else, um, but that was a Snapchat show I did on the app. Yeah, they have like little short videos. Um, it's called the Dead Girls Detective Agency. So I'm in two seasons of that, which is fun, but that was the only one I've ever been offered. Every other role had been auditions. And even if I got the audition from referral, it wasn't immediately here's the job. I still had to put in the work for it. Another thing people don't realize when you book a show, you know, the goal is to hopefully be on that show as long as possible so everyone has work. You know, the actors, crew, everyone in production, because then everyone has a livelihood. Power Rangers is one of those weird jobs that going into production and filming, we know we're technically kind of gonna be fired or let go after two seasons because that's just what Power Ranger does. You know, after Mighty Morphin, where they kept the same people for so long, they changed the formula and it was always just two seasons, new cast, two seasons, new cast. And only Dino Fury has broken that to being able to do three seasons, which is fantastic. But up until that point, knowing that you're only gonna be hired for so long was bittersweet because we filmed 44 episodes and, you know, as we got closer to wrapping, we all thought that we'd have a lot of work immediately kind of right afterwards, or at least I did. So you were like, yeah, I'm ready to get home. But then you get home and you're like, no one's hiring me. I want to be working again. So you have like this weird identity crisis a little bit, or I did like the first month I was like burnt out, but I wanted to be working, but no one was hiring me. And I didn't know if Power Rangers was gonna like take off or do anything for my career, but it's just so much of a learning experience. And I think a lot of things in life truly, it's how you perceive them or look back on them and what you take from those lessons. So I'm very grateful to have been a part of it. And I would have done it all over again, even with it being non-union, even with it being in another country, even with getting not unlimited data on my cell phone or whatever and living in a house together, I would change certain elements if I had the chance. But overall, I still think it was a great experience and I would definitely still do it because Power Rangers is still pretty cool. Now, if you want to continue this walk with me, check out this video where I explain how I became the Red Power Ranger.